Evangelicals, President Trump and Adventists. The Adventist Review is the flagship journal of the Adventist Church, so naturally whoever is the editor has a position of tremendous power to shape and influence the way that Adventists think. William Johnson was the editor for 24 years from 1982 until 2006. Several months ago, Johnson wrote this article right here that was published by Spectrum. And for those that do not know, Spectrum is a waste of cyberspace that openly honors and celebrates the most notorious abortionist, Edward Allred, who boasted of killing over 250,000 children and who specifically targeted black and Hispanic children as a means of population control. Those are facts that are a matter of public record. That Johnson would publish this piece right here speaks volumes and, as you will see, proves an important point. He starts by saying, one of the most puzzling aspects of the current political scene is the evangelical support for President Trump. How can this be? In the past, evangelicals have issued clarion calls for moral character. So right here in the very beginning, Johnson has already implied that Protestant Christians who support Trump are in some way departing from morality. He says that evangelicals in the United States are different than evangelicals elsewhere because, quote, in America, they have become heavily involved in politics, agitating for a clearly defined social agenda. Well, what's their agenda? They have the goal of electing conservatives, influencing legislation, appointing Supreme Court justices in order to reverse the hated Roe v. Wade decision of 1973, which legalized the killing of children, and in doing so, they had exchanged grace for ungrace in their zeal to change the culture through legislation rather than by transforming power of the gospel, they had what? They had lost their way. And any attempt to, quote, enforce the morality of not violently killing children is serpent wisdom. Now, take a moment to appreciate that. Here is the longest serving editor of the Adventist Church's flagship journal openly publicly attacking evangelicals because, according to him, any attempt to protect children from being violently killed is the wisdom of a serpent. In other words, if you live in a society where some people want to kill their children, then you should not try to intervene or seek to stop it because only a serpent would do that. Now, that statement may sound incredibly shocking or bizarre to many of you watching this video, but there is a reason for this, and he explains it right here. This is the key sentence. Most Adventists in America would agree with the evangelical strictures against abortion, but they are uncomfortable with attempts to enforce morality through legislation. Separation of what? Separation of church and state is an idea deeply rooted in the Adventist psyche. That is a lie. That's not true. This article is very misleading and contains many errors, so let's take a moment to make some corrections. In America, evangelicals have become heavily involved in politics, agitating for a clearly defined social agenda. Seventh-day Adventists are notorious for boasting about and bragging that Adventist pioneers loudly and publicly agitated for the defined social agenda of ending slavery. Adventists are notorious for boasting that Ellen White and Adventist pioneers were so involved in agitating for the clearly defined social agenda of temperance that she even advocated voting on the Sabbath to make alcohol illegal. So simply because a Protestant denomination wants to agitate for legislation to correct some social evil is not in itself wrong. Otherwise, all of our Adventist pioneers, including Ellen White, were also wrong. Evangelicals have the goal of electing conservatives, influencing legislation, and appointing justices to reverse Roe versus Wade, which legalized the killing of children, and in doing so, they'd exchange grace for ungrace in their zeal to change the culture through legislation rather than by the transforming power of the gospel. They had what? They had lost their way. Again, that is not true. This is very misleading. Adventist leaders in North America and at the headquarters in the GC where Johnson worked are notorious for boasting about our history on temperance and slavery, but they remain completely silent about our history on abortion. Adventist pioneers unanimously define the unborn as living human children. They condemned abortion as a violation of the Sixth Commandment, calling it child murder and infanticide. They condemned other Protestant denominations for supporting abortion. They published anti-abortion sermons written by non-Adventists in our own official journals, and they showed public sympathy and support for anti-abortion legislation. Even historians today like Professor Mark
Harvard Olaskian professor Joseph De La Pena when writing about 19th century anti-abortion legislation and sentiments they cite from Adventists because their opposition and condemnation were so strong. Adventists were a brand new, very small denomination, yet they made it very clear and very public that they would in no way support the killing of children. William Johnson, however, conveniently totally ignores this history. As the editor of the Adventist flagship journal, he never addressed the implications of this history, and yet he has the audacity to falsely accuse evangelicals of engaging in some type of serpent-inspired agenda that violates church and state. The truth, which Johnson knows all too well, is that the Adventist Church accepted abortion in 1970, 1971 for the sole purpose of making money in Adventist hospitals in the USA. It has been thoroughly documented right here that leaders in the church kept this a secret and lied about our church's involvement in abortion for over 15 years. On several different occasions, the Adventist Review openly misled both the public and the church and published false information and go ahead and guess. Just go ahead and take a guess. Who was the editor that hid this information? Oh, surprise, it was William Johnson himself. That's right. This man who has the audacity to criticize and attack evangelicals he himself misled his own church. And the only reason that Adventists began to learn what was going on is because in the mid-1980s, Catholics and Evangelicals began protesting abortion on demand in our own hospitals, and this was published in international newspapers like the Washington Post. We Adventists today can be thankful, we can be very thankful for the courage of these Catholics and Evangelicals because without their loud publicized protests, we would have remained in the dark as to what our church was really doing. Many of you watching this video, while you may not agree with all of their theology, if it were not for them, this would have remained a secret. However, once this was exposed, church leaders knew that Adventists would not support abortion, so they became creative and came up with a new theology by claiming that killing children by abortion was a matter of, quote, religious liberty or freedom of conscience, and as such, should be protected as a sacred right. This history and background is critical because you can now understand this sentence. Most Adventists in America would agree with the evangelical strictures against abortion, but they are uncomfortable with attempts to enforce morality through legislation. Separation of church and state is an idea deeply rooted in the Adventist psyche. Notice number one, he openly admits that even today, even after 30 plus years of propaganda from church leaders, the majority of Adventists in the USA still do not support abortion but then number two, par for the course, he teaches that killing children is a matter of religious liberty, a matter of separation of church and state, and as such should not be a matter of legislation. This is, of course, completely false. The problem is that Johnson claims that we Adventists are Bible-based believers, yet neither Johnson himself nor any church leader has ever provided the biblical evidence for supporting abortion. Johnson says that evangelicals accept the Bible as authoritative and that because we also share the same general belief in the authority of the Bible, that Adventists are evangelicals of the evangelicals. Yet notice this, he condemns them for opposing abortion, but he himself cannot provide a single shred of biblical evidence why killing children is a matter of religious liberty. You notice that? He cannot provide a single Bible verse why evangelicals are supposedly wrong on abortion. What is the biblical principle that distinguishes a baby born two months premature from a seven-month fetus, making it a crime to kill a first, but merely an exercise of personal freedom to destroy the second? That right there is the jugular question. This is the linchpin of Johnson's claims, yet he has absolutely no answer, and he has no answer because it's not true. The entire claim is false. And to make it worse, Johnson contradicts himself in this very same article. He says that we believe the Bible is a authoritative, but then he says, Adventists are a people with high regard for adherence to biblical norms, but our what? Our ethics are informed by a major consideration outside the purview of evangelicals, our involvement in healthcare. In other words, you evangelicals, you don't know what you are talking about because we have hospitals and you don't. For us, truth is derived from where? From where? From two sources, scripture and the natural world. We consider data from the Bible in 
conjunction with what we learn through the large network of Adventist physicians, scientists, and others employed in the killing or healing arts again and again and again. As I've detailed so many times in other videos, here again is another open admission that our position and history on abortion has nothing to do with the Bible. The ultimate position is decided by, quote, real life situations. Remember, these are the same Adventists who say it's okay to legislate against alcohol, legislate against smoking, legislate against gambling. These are the same Adventists who say there are no exceptions whatsoever to withhold tithe. There are exceptions to kill children, but never to withhold tithe. These are the same Adventists who celebrate Desmond Doss, who would not even kill his own enemy during war, but simultaneously claim that there is freedom to violently murder a child by abortion. According to Johnson, one of the defining characteristics of evangelicals includes authority of the Bible, then the answer must be an unqualified yes. Adventists are evangelicals of the evangelicals. Our investigation has shown, however, that evangelicals in America are driven by two impulses outside these four defining markers. But again, that is not true. This is not our investigation. This is his propaganda. Johnson has a language problem of using the pronoun we, our, when he should be saying I, me, or my. This is not an accident because he's an editor. He knows this. So one can rightly assume that Johnson does this on purpose. He's doing it deliberately in order to influence his audience. And notice right here that Johnson throughout this article claims that abortion is outside. That's the key word. It's outside the authority of the Bible. This also is not true. It's a complete falsehood that has been repeated continually by church leaders, even as recent as a few months ago at the year-end meetings and annual council. And I already made videos on that. They claim that the Bible does not speak about killing children, but this is not true because both the Old Testament and New Testament repeatedly defined the unborn as full, complete, living human children and as such, by definition, are protected by the Sixth Commandment. Johnson then recalls official meetings with Adventists and Evangelicals where Adventist leader Burt Beach stated, well, if you insist on stating that Adventists based the beliefs on Ellen White, we must insist that the statement including the fact that your Sunday keeping is based on tradition, not on the Bible. Notice that word right there, touche. Johnson boasts that he got them. We got those evangelicals on Sunday keeping because it's not based on the Bible. And he does this boasting in an article where evangelicals are right on abortion and we are wrong. We Adventists cannot defend our position or history on abortion, yet he has the audacity to publicly and openly attack and criticize them. While Adventists hold a high view of life, we do not judge on the pro-life political bandwagon, that is both false and distorted. Again, he uses the pronoun we to try to influence people to join him in the crazy satanic belief that killing children is a sacred religious right. Second, there is nothing wrong in voting for someone who wants to stop the killing of children. And third, he's repeating the lie that you are engaging in partisan politics if you speak up for the Sixth Commandment. Adventist leaders are, again, notorious for boasting of A.T. Jones' famous 1888 speech before the United States Senate arguing against National Sunday Law. Yet this very same speech, Jones correctly argued, the civil government exists for the protection of what? For the protection of life, and that it is Caesar's duty and jurisdiction to protect life. The government of the United States of America has the God-given scriptural jurisdiction and duty to protect the right to life, and as such, Adventists have a moral obligation. We are bound by scripture to uphold and encourage the United States government to protect the right to life. But Johnson would have us believe the exact opposite, that doing so is, oh, that's political. Well, guess what? Slavery was so political that it divided an entire nation and led to a horrible, bloody civil war. Yet Adventists dared not remain silent and condemned it openly. And why? Because it is first a moral issue regardless of politics. It is wrong. It is a sin to even suggest to an Adventist that we should stand down and remain quiet in a culture of death. Speaking about alcohol, Ellen White wrote the following, but think of this quote in terms of abortion today. Our laws sustain an evil which is sapping their very foundations. Many deplore the wrongs which they know exist, but consider themselves free from all responsibility in the matter. This cannot be. Every individual exerts an influence in society. In our favored land of the United States of America, America, 
Every voter has some voice in determining what laws shall control the nation. Should not that influence and that vote be cast on the side of temperance and virtue? The advocates of temperance, they fail to do their whole duty unless they exert their influence by precept and example, by voice and pen and by vote. Fourth, this entire article is specific to the situation in the United States of America. Johnson and other Adventist leaders totally gloss over and ignore the glaring fact that many evangelicals and many Adventists voted for Donald Trump because the only other option was far worse. Hillary Clinton displayed open, unashamed support for abortion in the 2016 election, and the entire current field of Democratic candidates for the 2020 election are all openly, publicly boasting of their support for unfettered, unrestricted killing of children until birth and even after birth. And notice this, Johnson offers no answer, no solution, and no alternative if the only presidential candidate that promises pro-life policies is not good enough for Johnson, then who are we supposed to vote for? If Ronald Reagan or George Bush were more moral than Trump, then where was Johnson's support back then? Oh, that's right, he said nothing, and that explains the necessity of this video. There is something much bigger here. There is a problem much greater than the narrow scope of abortion within the USA. When leaders in the Adventist church urge you not to vote or support people who want to uphold the right to life, they are doing more than simply shaping your politics. They are shaping your eschatology. They are teaching Adventists that during an extreme moral crisis, when the fallout of the sexual revolution has led, among other evils, to the dissolution of the family, and the barbaric genocide of multiplied millions of children, by telling you not to support an opposing voice, they are molding you to be quiet when your voice needs to be the most heard. They are leading you to sit down at the very time that you need to stand up. If you cannot be a witness for the sixth commandment now, then how in the world will you be a witness for the fourth commandment later? If you cannot handle the political climate now on abortion, then how will you handle handle the future climate on the Sabbath when the fires will be 100 times hotter. Not only does this false doctrine undermine people's faith, it ruins our Christian witness. We have a lot in common with evangelicals. They are one of the most receptive groups to our Adventist message, and yet our leaders support and defend something that is absolutely abhorrent and reprehensible and causes any honest Christian not of our denomination to view our church with disgust and hold our message in contempt. Adventists are uniquely positioned to contribute to the vexed bioethical issues of the day. Adventist ethicists like the late Dr. Jack Provencha and Dr. Jerry Winslow have had and have a major impact. I already made an entire video refuting the falsehoods of Dr. Winslow, so anybody who's appealing to him has serious problems. And as for Dr. Provencha, this is the same Dr. Provencha who claimed in his essay on abortion that you are not a human being until the moment that you become responsible. This is, of course, completely insane. It's, it's complete madness. There are several other errors and false statements in this article, but that's enough for this video. I've covered the major points that this article was written by the longest serving editor of the review. It's such a disgrace, and it just goes to show how deeply flawed and perverted our thinking has become. In closing, I want to say thank you to the evangelicals for demonstrating the courage to fight against this horrible evil for so many years. Thank God that the evangelicals and Catholics have demonstrated the backbone to stand for the Sixth Commandment. As a citizen of the United States of America and as a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, I look forward to joining you at the ballot box this year to elect leaders and elect a president who will aggressively forward the agenda to make the killing of children illegal. If Donald Trump remains the best pro-life option, then may God bless that man with another four years and grant him great success in completely, I mean completely annihilating Roe versus Wade.